was no other automaker in the U.S. that was more adversely affected by the government-mandated corporate average fuel economy standards during the late 1970s and 1980s than Cadillac. When the corporate average fuel economy standards were first enacted back in 1975, Cadillac's big iron block V8 had an engine displacement of 500 cubic inches, which was 8.2 liters, and was the perfect engine to power its very large full-size cars. Seven years later, Cadillac's V8 was a new much smaller 249 cubic inch 4.1 liter V8, which had an aluminum engine block and was exactly half the engine displacement size of the old 8.2 liter V8. Before the 4.1 liter V8 and after the 500 V8 was the Cadillac 425 cubic inch 7.0 liter V8, which was replaced by Cadillac's 368 cubic inch 6.0 liter V8 for the 1980 model year. The 368 V8 shared the same engine block with Cadillac's 425, 472, and 500 V8s. The 368 had the same engine stroke as the 425 and 472 V8s and had an engine bore smaller than the 425, 472, and 500 V8s. For 1981, the 368 returned but was rebranded as the V864 engine since it had a computer-controlled cylinder deactivation system in order to improve fuel economy. It was rated at 140 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. It had appeared that Cadillac with the V864 had found the perfect solution to comply with the corporate average fuel economy standards and still provide a smooth operating V8 with enough horsepower and torque to keep its customers happy. This engine was a big undertaking and a massive gamble back in 1981 for both Cadillac and GM. Today, not even a second thought is given to this technology since GM, Stellantis, and other automakers have reliably used computer-controlled cylinder deactivation systems in some of their engines since the mid-2000s. Worth noting, Cadillac also offered in its cars during this time to boost fuel economy numbers, the Buick 4.1 liter V6 as an engine delete option, and the optional Oldsmobile 5.7 liter diesel V8. Compared to other automakers, Cadillac had been at the forefront of computer technology since the 1970s, implementing state-of-the-art electronics and computer technology with its cars, which also included an array of computer-controlled digital dash readouts. One such readout was called the MPG Sentinel, which gave occupants the exact MPG of the engine at any precise moment. Cadillac's first implementation of a computer-controlled port fuel-injected V8 in the mid-1970s was a big success. Unfortunately, Cadillac's cylinder deactivation-equipped V864 engine was nothing short of a disaster. Cadillac called this new cylinder deactivation system modulated displacement. The concept was innovative and technologically sound with the V864 using eight, six, or four cylinders depending on what the power requirements of the engine were at any given time. The problem was not mechanical, for the concept was simple. Solenoids mounted on the rocker arm studs above each cylinder that could be deactivated would close the valves of the cylinders not needed at any particular time. When cylinders were deactivated, they still moved in conjunction with the cylinders in use. The closed valves kept the deactivated cylinders from participating in the combustion process. Since the deactivated cylinders remained in motion when cylinders were reactivated, the valves of these cylinders 
would reopen, thus causing them to be part of the combustion process again. Additionally, when cylinders were deactivated, the computer would adjust the fuel and airflow from the engine's throttle body fuel injection system to compensate. The problem was flawed computer programming, which in some cases couldn't react in enough time, causing delayed cylinder deactivation or reactivation, which created engine drivability issues. The V864 became a real headache for owners and Cadillac mechanics. It was also a big public relations disaster for Cadillac, which before this fiasco had a stellar reputation. Today's modern cylinder deactivation systems have much more sophisticated central computers that can detect and make changes in milliseconds, making cylinder deactivation and reactivation seem seamless. Cadillac, to its credit, tried very hard to remedy the situation by offering several PROM upgrades to the central computer. The latter PROM versions greatly improved drivability. Unfortunately, with the multitude of angry customers, many Cadillac dealers didn't have the luxury of waiting for these future PROM upgrades. Instead, they just deactivated the modulated displacement system, which in effect converted the V864 into a regular 368 V8 that ran on all eight cylinders all the time. With this corrective fix, fuel efficiency may have dropped, but customers didn't care. They were just happy having a smooth and predictable engine under the hood. The V864 was replaced with the 4.1 liter V8 for the 1982 model year. However, the V864 would live on through the 1984 model year, powering Cadillac's rear-wheel drive commercial limousines. In summary, Cadillac was right with its development of the V864 engine. However, it was wrong in rushing it into production for the 1981 model year. Had Cadillac spent a few more years testing and perfecting its modulated displacement system, the V864 could have been a big success. The sad truth was, after the public relations disaster, the V864 with the latter PROM upgrades ended up being a fuel-efficient, smooth operating, and reliable engine. Thank you so much for your support of this channel. Please subscribe since your support is the reason this channel is a success. And please make sure to click on the bell icon so that you never miss a new video release.